Hello. Welcome back to Enabled. This here in front of me is a PS4 controller that I built for my quadriplegic nephew Hayden. This was a prototype. It's the first time I'd ever built anything like this, so it's not perfect, but I did want to show it to everyone because it does work. It's also not the best layout as we found after we tested it, uh, but we're really excited that it worked and we're gonna expand this into a bunch of different possibilities. So what you see here is exactly what I'm holding in my hand. It has the same capability that a PS4 controller would have. I laid it out so it'd be easy to identify what the buttons were. So for example, these four buttons here, we have X, triangle, circle, and square. Uh, R1, L1, L2, R2, share, the PS button, and the pause option button. There's a couple buttons on here that are not listed uh, because, again, this was just a prototype and I wanted to see if it worked and the, and the two buttons I didn't th feel were that important and that was the L3, R3, which is when you press down on the toggle switches. That's L3, R3. It also doesn't have the trackpad capability, uh, but as far as I know, that's not used a lot anyway. I'm not really a, a game console guy. I'm more of a PC mouse and keyboard guy, so I'm not really familiar with the controllers enough to know what's commonly used and what isn't. But back to this controller. We got the button layout, as I just uh, mentioned. The two opposite corners here are the analog sticks, so it would be the thumb sticks on the PS4 controller. And then the two opposite corners here, this joystick up here is the directional pad, so we've got up, down, left, right. That's this guy here, up, down, left, right. And then this guy, I wanted to try something different for Hayden to see if it would work for him uh, better than pressing the buttons. This guy is a, a joystick that if you press up on it, that's the same as pressing the triangle button. If you pull it back, that's the same as pressing the X button. And then if you take it left, that's square, and right, that's circle. I wanted to get a feel for what worked with Hayden, what didn't, what he liked, what he didn't like, so I put a bunch of different types of buttons in here. I put different joystick uh, types in here as well to see what, what worked for him. These two big white pieces on the end of the joysticks we added later. So originally we had regular uh, bat tops, ball tops, and I can't find the, the ball top that goes on this one. It's around here somewhere, but I can't, couldn't find it. So the, these two joysticks had that same type of top on it. Hayden wanted something that he could hook his finger around. So he has an electric wheelchair and he normally, um, it has little goal post things kind of like this and he hooks his finger on it so that he can really uh, feel it and move it around and has more control. So my other nephew, Kevin, uh, he's a machinist and he machined these tops out of Delrin plastic. And we tried that and I think Hayden liked this method better. I think we're going to tweak that a little bit as we go, uh, but um, that's why we're at here. I'm going to step through all the individual components inside of this thing and I'm going to show you exactly how I built it from the very beginning steps all the way to the final testing. Now this controller will work with a PS4, a Nintendo Switch, and a PC. So you've got three platforms that you could use it on. You could expand on this if you didn't if you if you're an Xbox guy, uh, you could change the electronics inside to work with Xbox and PC. Um, there are other ones out there that you can connect to other systems, so it's it's kind of versatile as far as what you connect to. I'm working on a completely different design outside of this 
that's going to be way more versatile than even this one is. But we're going to start here and then we'll get to that one later. This is a wireless controller just like a PS4 would be so you don't have to have a cable connecting it to the PS4 uh, with some exceptions that we'll get into later. I also have the LED lights here in a row that tell you what player you are. So on a PS4 controller it has different colored lights that light up depending on what player you are. And I have that uh, laid out here as well. Let's take a peek under the hood of this thing. See what makes it tick. So normally I have a couple screws in here holding the top board on, but I already removed those. So we'll lift the top off. And oh my, it's a uh, wired up rat's nest. Looks like I've got a bunch of wires. Oh, there's nothing even connected to that one. A bunch of wires strung out here that aren't connected to anything. That's fine. The reason that is is because I've opened and closed this thing multiple times and I've tried different things that didn't work and then I just pulled those out and left the wires in place but no big deal we'll address that later what I really wanted to show you was uh, the back of these buttons so we talked about the buttons individually here are the two different types of buttons so we have one here that has the switch built in and on that button you have the smaller wire spades compared to this button right next to it which has the switch with a clicky click and that has the larger wire spades on it which those seem to be pretty tight but Here's the large wire spade versus the small one. Where in the world did it go? Here we go. Here are the two wire spades compared. So you can see the one in this hand is quite a bit bigger than the one in this hand. And that's something that you have to keep in mind when you're putting this together. If you get wire spades like this, you have to make sure to get the right size and of course the joysticks are wired similarly to the clicky click switches so they also take the wider spades but you can see there's just uh, one wire going in and one wire coming out one wire is ground and the other wire just goes to the signal and that's the same for the joysticks the joysticks have four switches on there so here's one two three and four and that's because you have up down left and right so it's it's really straightforward each one has a ground and each one has a signal running to our electric board which in this case is the brook wireless fight board that's what this guy is right here This is a breakout board uh, made by a company called Brook. And they make several versions of this. This one is a wireless, it's called the Wireless Fight Board. And it's designed to connect to a PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. And they made it really easy to connect all these buttons and switches. So if you see this uh, screw terminal right here, each one of these buttons and switches goes into that screw terminal. Let me zoom in here so you can see this board a little bit better. All right, this is a more zoomed in look at it. 
So you get a, a screw terminal, screw terminal block right here, and each one of these wires that I have running into the screw terminal block goes to different buttons and switches, joysticks, whatever. All of that connects right here. So it makes it really easy. There's no soldering required. You just strip the wire, poke it in here, and tighten your screw down. Fantastic. This guy over here is for the LEDs, the player one, two, three, and four LEDs. Um, I made this plug myself and it was pretty much a disaster. As you can see, the, the wires I think are a little bit too big for the connector that I tried to use them in and I just forced it in and made it work. It does work, so I left it alone, didn't worry about it. In the future, I'll try to do better. Uh, there are other things on this board that I'm not using. Coming this direction, so this plug right here is the USB signal out, and this cable comes with the Brook board, so it's not anything that you have to make. And same with this cable right here, this plug, that also comes with a brook board and that goes to the USB out, which is this guy right here. I've got it going through my half inch plywood. But if you look on the other end, you will see that it is a USB connection. Can't remember what kind of USB that's called. Um, Mini? No. Small? Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's the kind of USB that you would see on a printer or something like that. The square kind USB. And then this guy right here is the antenna. That's how the wireless connection goes from the controller or from the brook board to the PS4. And that antenna line comes through here and plugs in right here. Sorry all these wires are in the way. This is just an overview of what I got going on here. I'm gonna take all of this apart because I'm gonna get rid of this controller anyway and then I'll walk you step by step on how I built it. Uh, one more thing how the, because this is a wireless board, it requires some kind of battery power. And I've got that strapped in here with some masking tape. This is a battery that would normally go in a PS4 controller. I purchased this, had it shipped from the Amazon, and it plugs right into the Brook board, and that seems to be working just fine. And then the thing would charge normally, just like you would a PS4 controller. You would plug the USB power into here, and that would charge the battery. And then I've got the whole brook board screwed into the plywood using these uh, standoffs. I've just got screws going through the standoff down into the plywood. And then I've got little screws going through the board down into the standoffs. Pretty straightforward. I know it looks like a mess and it looks really complicated, but it's actually very simple and easy to make. All the wires, everything's connected together with these spade terminals like I showed earlier. And then I'll explain how the ground connections work and how I got the buttons and joysticks to play together. That was an overview of the PS4 controller, what's inside of it, kind of how it works. I ended up splitting up the video so that there's going to be another video following this part two showing how to build the controller. If it looks like the videos were filmed like they were supposed to be in one video, that's because they were, but unfortunately, just based on the time that I have, I filmed these things over several weeks and um, when I go to edit it and put it all together, I find out that I repeat myself a lot because I can't remember what I filmed in week one versus week five. 
And so I think it's going to be cleaner if I split this one up. So this was part one. Check out part two later. If you learned anything or if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you later. Thanks.